G'day, Michael here. This video today is about using a Bloom eco drill. That's not still clear. Okay, so you can see it's got uh, three plungers with three various size drill bits right there. That's the 35mm drill bit, 8mm drill bit either side. The eco drill will drill any of the Bloom patterns with a 35mm centre hole with the two 8mm side holes. And that gives us quite a variety of hinges. Now this is a hinge that's designed to mount two doors together on a uh, bifold door in a corner cabinet in the kitchen. Here, as you can see, it's very similar. But it's designed to mount the door at a 45 degree angle from the side of the cabinet. This is a more conventional layout of a hinge. It's a cranked hinge, where are we? A cranked hinge. Again, it's got the 35mm centre hole and the 8mm holes either side. But this one's uniqueness is the fact that it has a clasp mechanism. Let's see if I can demonstrate that. It has a um, cam arrangement here which pulls down on these two what shows up in the video is black. Okay, as it pulls down these lugs, let's see if I can, as it pulls down these lugs, it, they widen in the hole and, and pull the hinge and door together. Um, these are 170 degree hinges. Let's hold that centered, very hard to see. Again, the same drill pattern and a similar cam arrangement. As you can see, all these hinges that I've shown you are different, and they're significantly different, but what they have in common is those holes. The creation today is of three different types of hinge. The crank hinge, which is a half overlay. I'll demonstrate what that means later. Uh, straight hinges, or full overlay. And the 170 degree hinges, also full overlay. They have the three different types of hinge, but also show three different types of material. Plywood, particle board, and MDF. I hope that's clear enough. All right. Now, what I have here is a, an open-sided mock-up of a cabinet, so you can see inside and out of what I'm doing. Uh, I've got a pair of zero um, mounting plates already mounted to the cabinet. So all I'll be demonstrating really is the drilling and the uh, inserting of the hinges and some adjustment. The eco drill itself, uh, where are we? Back here. The eco drill itself has got a couple of dry pins which are clipped into these um, uh, cams. Here you can see the little drive unit looks rather like a Torx bit. It may even be a Torx bit. The eco drill has a centre line and uh, cam clamps on either side to pull. Okay. Now the first thing you need to do is get the unit on your workpiece, bring the clamp assembly up and tighten those two screws. The moment you push the cams down, these will slightly readjust to suit your thickness of material. I'll drill my first hole, I'll uh, trailer the, the centre hole. And as you saw, that was fairly quick. Um, the large workshop machinery costs numbers of thousands of dollars, so these are actually very cheap way out of being able to, you can see the holes, very cheap way out of doing this drilling process. And of course this goes wherever you can go with a drill. basically crumbles up into a fairly loose lot of shavings. 
MDF comes out more like a, um, I don't know, an orange peel or something like that, where you've got a, a spool at a side, doesn't make any difference. Now I've made some very fine marks here uh, to show me where at the end of the panel is. Of course you could do that yourself, or whatever you wish to do. My setting here is at 88mm from the edge, because that fits in with a lot of other, other processes I do. And then it's worth stopping with the drilling process because it breaks the shaving up. And here you'll see it's quite a lot more different to there are shavings which do clog the, the device. So I set the drill in reverse. I find that a reasonably good method to shake the worst bit out. As you can see, there's still quite a bit in the machine. You also might have noticed these uh, pretend doors are very small, and I'm still managing them with quite ease. Quite ease. Plywood is kind of between the two, because plywood has uh, definite layers, but they tend to break up more than the MDF. Let's see how this one goes. As you can see, there are shavings, but they don't hold together anywhere near as well as they And being plywood, there are defects in the material, soft spots, with a short grain or whatever. Whereas MDF is much more consistent. But in any case, you'll see in this demonstration that it's quite happy to work with any material. So there you have the three different materials drilled. The plywood, MDF, particle board. I'll just arbitrarily grab each type of hinge. As you can see, it's quite rapid using the inserter. Another advantage these inserters have, you can take them out quite easily and swap the hinge if you've chosen the wrong kind. This is on these 170 degree hinges. There we go. So this style of hinge allows the opening to be very wide, perhaps. Let's show. That'll go from there right around. So if that's the side of your cabinet, it opens well out of the road. So that if you're in a corridor or anything, passageway, you can get past the cabinet very freely. Okay, well that basically is mounted pretty well perfectly anyway. It's flush to the outside edge of the cabinet. 
and it's already aligned top and bottom nicely. If you need to, there are adjustment screws, which perhaps I'll show in a bit of detail. To adjust up and down, we have the two mounting screws on the mounting plate. They need to be loosened and then the plate can be slid up and down. There is a, a screw in here which you reach through from the outside to gain adjustment left and right. Pardon me. And there's, there's a, it looks like a screw head here but it's actually a cam. Winding that in and out will bring the hinge forward and backwards. On one of the simpler hinges this will be easier to demonstrate. Okay, so that's been mounted. Next. These are the, the 170 degree hinges. 107, not 170. Being so light, there's no resistance. You know, real cabinet's a lot easier. Okay, so that's basically mounted again flush. If I need to adjust it, that's easily done. I'll pop this door off. And now you can see that's what this pair of hinges are. The difference with this design is you can see there's a bit of an edge here. It's actually in from the edge of the cabinet. That's so that you can put a pair of doors either side, so perhaps, I don't know how well that shows up. You can put a second door on this side, and so what they are called is half overlay. Okay. So if you look at uh, any of the other hinges in the listing, they're the half overlay, and a zero overlay would be with the door all the way over. Of course, these uh, clip on hinges allow for an easy change of doors. Again, if you've made a mistake with the hinge design, you can easily change them. It's okay. That is now pretty well flush. I might zoom in and get more detail. See there's the slightest bit uh, here uncovered, and on the top it's quite perfect. This shows I'm using a posi drive screwdriver bit. You can see the, the door moving. It's quite a bit of adjustment on the door, and that's this forward screw, the one to the outer of the cabinet. The one further in is for moving front to back. Let's see how that shows up there showing very well. So moving the hinge front to back. Can you see that? Is that? It's quite a rapid adjustment in and out. And of course to move the door up and down, it's a matter of just releasing these hinges at the mounting plate. And then the door can be slid up. As you can see, there's the adjustment up. And of course, it can be slid it down, but the bench won't be going further. Well, I hope that's of interest to you and uh, helps you with your next little project. I'll <laughs> catch you later. Bye.